If you're tired of hearing the same old basic mindset and motivational fluff talk, you've come to the right show. Welcome to Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast where we dish on everything from managing that crazy brain of yours to manifesting abundance to my straightforward, actionable steps that will make you major money online. Now, I'm not your typical multimillionaire entrepreneur. It takes a small village to keep my anxiety and depression in check. I'm inherently disorganized with an intense obsession with office supplies. Your girl here is a digital marketing content expert who's generated over $200 million in sales. I promise by tuning in twice a week, you will get a much needed refreshing dose of truth, clarity, and cash making advice. Now let's get to it. My posse, my people, my fellow crazies. I just looked at our production schedule. So our calendar and how I lay out episodes and which episodes to drop here and what guest episodes to put there. And I went all the way back to my first episode. You realize that almost to the day, this show has been on four years my mind is blown how fast time goes by four freaking years. And you know what pisses me off more is how many of you have been listening for years and still haven't left me a five star written Apple podcast review. That is seriously criminal that you have been absorbing and benefiting and loving this content and have not given me a damn review. That's all I ask for. So you can pause this episode right now if you're going to procrastinate and not do it or write yourself a sticky note so you do it right after if you're multitasking right now, which my guess is you probably are. And in celebration of Project Me with Tiffany Carter being on for four years, please go to Apple Podcasts and write a review. You can also write reviews on Spotify. If you're not sure how to write a review, you can Google it. And the step-by-step instructions will come up. It literally takes you maybe 45 seconds. If you're a slow typer, maybe 90 seconds. You can leave your name or your Instagram handle in the review and then DM me on Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany. Let me know you left it. Take a screenshot, which would be even better. And I would love to treat you to a coffee drink or a smoothie or a boba, whatever the hell you're into anything except pumpkin spice flavored items. I would love to treat you to a drink of your choice as saying thank you for being a grateful listener and practicing the law of reciprocity that I teach when it comes to money, when it comes to manifesting. If you want people to be commenting and sharing and engaging with you on social media, you want people to be opening your emails, you want people to be excited about your offers and giving you testimonials and shout outs. Well, when was the last time you've done it? Mm? Okay, I think I've made my point clear, but I really want to get to 600 Apple podcast reviews. And that would be a beautiful thing to support the show and all the people who work so hard on it behind the scenes. You know what I love? I love fucking complaining. (laughs) In fact, it's a necessary part of my manifestation process. Every day, I hear someone making an apology after they vent or complain about something that's upsetting them, whether it's a stranger I'm overhearing because I definitely listen in on people's conversations, or it's a client or someone in my Project Me Posse group coaching membership. There's always this apology, more so from women than men, but definitely hear it from men too. I'm sorry for being such a downer. I'm sorry for going off like that. I'm sorry for being such a wet blanket. I do it too. But my response is always the same. Please complain, love. You need to get it out. You're allowed to have all of your feelings. And we want to hear them. I want to hear them. Most of us were taught that complaining is bad. That makes you a negative person, ungrateful, Debbie Downer. I was personally strictly not allowed to utter anything that could be taken as a complaint growing up. Or I would suffer consequences of being verbally abused or stonewalled, if you're not familiar with that term, narcissists and highly toxic people do. They ignore you as a form of punishment. 
they self-justify in saying, oh, I'm angry, I can't talk, or I'm too emotional or upset right now, or I don't know what to say to you, or I'm processing. I'm sorry, but anything truly more than a day, and most of my therapists and psychologists would probably agree with this, is that if you're in a close relationship, even 24 hours is, oof, that's even a, that's even a long time. That's not, that's not even great. If you can't get your shit together in 12 hours to have an adult conversation with someone without flipping out or without being nasty, you probably need to go to anger management. You, you, need, you need some help. Anyway, but that's what my mom did as a main form of punishment. It is a form of abuse. So in turn, I never really feel hurt. I never felt hurt or understood because I couldn't express my full a range of feelings and opinions about anything. If you're not allowed to complain and get it out, even the word complain has a negative connotation. So then as an adult, I would judge myself harshly and even beat myself up for being too negative, taking over that punishment from my mom. I would punish myself. And I've caught myself recently because you've been listening. I've been going, I've been going through it over here. I don't know about you, but 2022 has uh, definitely put me through the spin cycle quite a few times. And I need to vent. I'm someone who needs to get it out. Bottling up and holding stuff in is what I did in my childhood. And then it comes out in other ways. It comes out in the form of overeating. It comes out in the form of depression, anxiety, lashing out, shopping unnecessarily. It comes out in procrastination. It's not a good thing. It's better to to get it out. And I need to do that now, whether I do it out loud when I'm by myself or I call up a friend, but it still comes up in my head like, well, God, Tiffany, you just laid a lot on someone. No one wants to hear about this or that situation again. No one wants to hear about that again. God, you've had one thing after another go on in 2022. It just seems like, you know, you've got so much. You're just too much for people. This is just too much. And what comes in the core underneath that? For me and maybe for you, it's I'll be abandoned. I'll be rejected. I'll be judged if I show my full self. Because when we're complaining, we're raw. We're real. That's our real selves, right? It's not a polished up version. It's not the job interview version of you. It's not the politically correct version of you. That's a raw and real emotional rant that you're in. And it is very vulnerable to complain. This is why I advocate it. And I'm not sitting here saying, oh, you should just be constant, one of those people who's constantly complaining. That's a whole nother issue. That's not good. That's someone who's staying stuck in that, in that state. I'm saying you need to let that air out of the balloon. You need to vent. You need to get it out if something's bothering you. But you've got to do it responsibly. If you're upset at someone in your life or it's a client situation, something politically, something that has to do with your garbage cans, which I could go off on a whole tangent right now. I ordered new garbage cans because the ones I inherited from the owners of this previous owners of this house were all nasty and I'm not here for it. So you can order fresh trash cans. I have beautiful, nice trash cans and someone swapped my cans for theirs. And I know they fucking did because my actual trash can, not the recycle one, is one level smaller, which is less expensive. And I'm paying for the more expensive one. And these trash cans are dirty as hell. And now I don't feel like I know for sure who took them, but I have an idea. And if I went to go swap my cans with theirs, they have fucking cameras all over the outside of their house. And then I would look crazy. So now I have to call the damn trash company. And I know you hate doing this shit too. All those adulting calls where you have to call, you know, the cell phone company, or you have to call the water company, or you have to call because the credit card, because you had a weird charge on your credit card. And you have to make that call. You know damn well it's a minimum of a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. So now I have to do that 
to get my proper cans back. Pisses me off. <laughs> so there's what I mean. I that even stuff like that. I have to get that out. Otherwise, that resentment is held inside of me and it brews. It feels better to get it out. It makes me feel heard. As long as when you're getting it out, you're going to somebody who has the capacity and the emotional maturity to be able to take it. And sometimes your own partner doesn't have it. Sometimes the close people in your life don't have it. You need to make sure you're going to someone where it's safe for you to be able to vent and rant and get that out. And you'll feel heard. Someone's not going to dismiss you. Well, you should really focus on gratitude, being grateful right now. Well, look at the bright side. Those are polite ways of someone dismissing your true feelings And then it actually can cause shame. And they're not even necessarily doing it on purpose. It's because they're uncomfortable with that level of vulnerability and that level of expression. They're uncomfortable. Maybe they were abused or they were punished for being expressive in that way. So they're projecting it on you, but that they're projecting their own shame on you. But then you end up feeling worse. God, I'm just annoying everyone. I guess I just need to like keep this in and deal with it with myself. Like maybe like no one else has these issues. Maybe I'm like too emotional. Maybe I'm just too expressive. Maybe I'm just too much. And then we end up shutting ourselves down and then we don't get heard. So as an adult, I would end up right getting, I would end up subconsciously. And this happened, this happened to me this year too. Going to people who don't have the emotional capacity or desire or ability to hold space when you're in a, when you're in a jam. Okay. Sometimes you're in a jam in life. You're in it for like months. You could be in it for a whole fucking year. I have a client whose daughter was murdered. I mean, do you think that she was okay even one year later? No, of course not. I know that's an extreme example. I also have a client who came home from work one day. Her husband was gone and all of his shit without any inkling or hint. He was cheating and he fully left her for another woman. Do you think this woman is just doing okay and is in pure blissful gratitude even five months later? Of course not. I have another client who he was fired from a decades long, high profile career out of the blue, no explanation, totally discarded. And it had nothing to do with his performance or lack of performance or anything at work. Do we think that he is okay even a year later that nothing comes up and nothing triggers him and he doesn't have bad months or bad weeks? Of course not. Of course not. So you could be in a jam and you could be needing that support and be able to get that stuff out. Here's how this ties to abundance. When you hold part of your emotions back about how you're feeling about things, you are also restricting your desires from being clear to the universe. How do we know what it is we're no longer available for? How do we know we will no longer accept someone poaching my goddamn brand new garbage cans? You know, you know, sis isn't going to allow this again. I'll put up a damn camera. (laughs) My American flag was stolen off the front of the house during the peak of the nonsense because apparently putting up the American flag is a signal for some political stance. I I didn't know that. And why would that? That's bizarre. So you put up a Canadian flag, you put up an Australian flag, like That means that you have a certain political stance. It's very strange to me. What if I put up a gay pride flag because it's gay pride month? What? So, so what, why can't it just be respect and support? And that was stolen. Now there's 25 cameras on the house. (laughs) Went a little far with it. Okay. There's like 
an $8,000 security system. But the universe knows now, and I'm also clear what I will no longer be available for in my life because I was able to vent out loud. I was able to express what I don't like, what hurts my feelings, what pisses me off, what is unacceptable, what I don't like. When you you mess with my money, honey, you don't pay your bills with me. You don't pay your invoices. Mm -hmm. There's some shit that's going to go down. You'll be speaking to Chuck, who's my attorney. But I have to get that out. When I first started in the, in this business. So what has been four years in the online space, my second, my second business, the podcast, the coaching business, it's completely different from B2B. You're working with, right? Small business owners, solopreneurs of all different types. It's just a very different process in terms of payment, right? When you're working with a multi-billion dollar company, right? It's very straightforward. You have a a contract, you have someone in payroll sending you an automatic deposit or a check. And I had some people that weren't paying, weren't paying on time, or I felt like they had to be chased for money and it felt so disrespectful to me and it pissed me off and I needed to vent about it. So what happened as a result of me venting about it? Maybe you need to vent about the fact that you don't your books aren't full. You don't have enough clients. People aren't buying your stuff. People aren't signing up for your freebies. And you're like, "What the hell is this?" Get it out because then you're making it clear, universe God, I am no longer available for this abundance blocker. I am no longer available for this nonsense in my life. I am no longer available for this hurt, this immaturity this lack of accountability, this abuse, this even if it's a behavior from your own kids, you need to vent it to another friend. Most people have kids love venting to me because I don't have kids and they know for sure I'm not going to judge them. And I for sure listen because I'm not sitting there going, well, that's not how I would parent. They know I'm not saying that. Get it out because then we really make it clear. And then what ends up happening when we get that out There's a energy that happens when we complain. You can hear it in my voice, even when I'm doing it and giving like examples now, it can fire you up. You don't have to be angry to complain. I'm not saying that, but it can just fire you up. And when that fire, use that, use that fire to propel you into action. I'm going to use that fire when I get off this podcast to make that damn phone call to the trash company that irritates me that I have to even make it because I hate making those calls. But I'm going to use that fire, that energy to go take care of that. I'm going to use that fire and energy for other things that are piss me off in my life to go do deeper work on myself to have a better understanding of how I can protect myself energetically from these types of people. It fuels us. It gets us into action. Being pleasant and mispositive all the time is a form of denial and dissociation. When I come across someone who's like this, I know they're in a deep amount of pain with decades of suppressed emotions. Those people who are like, oh yeah, well, my son got all F's and he's going to have to be in summer school. But you know what? God, God must want him to learn more in summer school. And, and this has to be just his work. And he had to learn from it. And I'm not saying there's not, it's not good to look at the bright side, the silver lining, but someone who's always in that spot, let me tell you something behind the scenes, they are one one pin drop away from crazy. These are the people you see on, on Dateline on the murder shows who have gone nuts and have like sliced their husband's throat in their sleep. Babies cry, toddlers have tantrums, dogs bark, cats hiss, but we as adults are supposed to put on a happy face and only speak positive words and stay in gratitude in order to manifest everything we desire. If that was the case, I would have a miserable broke ass life. Complaining and going on on about rants, about what is upsetting you, gets it out of your system so it doesn't consume you. It allows you to feel heard 
by God, by the universe, by people close to you, and yourself. Even if you're doing this by yourself out loud or leave yourself your own voice recording. Often the answers for what I desire or what actions I need to take come after my event. It's a form of emotional purging, which ends up providing great clarity. Otherwise, you have this craziness all zigzagging all over your brain. But once you emotionally purge, there's white space there where the clarity is in there. Right now, I have a couple more spots for my two-month private business coaching program. Summer applications are open. You can swipe up the links in the bio. You can go on my website at projectmewithtiffany.com under work with me. You know that it's time to stop messing around and toe dipping in your business, trying to use figuring it out as a profitable strategy, which isn't one. And you want to make sure you know exactly how to reach your goals in a way that feels good to you, step by step by someone who's done it, who has the receipts, you're going to want to apply. If you want what you say you want, it's time to get into the action of doing it. And if I don't feel you're a great fit at this time, or it's not the best use of your time, energy, and money... I will lovingly be honest with you because it's not a good look on me. I want you to get results. I want those good testimonials. I want you to get results so I don't just take people just to take your money. That doesn't serve either of us. And that ends up being a big cost in the long run. But homegirl here ain't cheap. So don't apply if you're not willing to put serious skin in the game. This is the definition of okay, I'm making a proper tax deductible business investment. I'm doing this thing. If you go to apply for a loan or a grant, you should be putting in there that you're hiring a top business coach or a top business consultant to show you how to actually get consistent clients and cash in your business. They will love that because without that, you don't have a business. You have a jobby, a time and energy sucking hobby. You can have the best books, you can have the best items, you can have the best knowledge, you can have the biggest heart, you can be a beautiful healer, you can have great gifts. But if no one knows you exist and no one is compelled to sign up or pay you and you don't know how to present it in a way to get people to do those things, it doesn't matter. You're not going to be able to help all the people because either you're going to have to quit because you're not making money or no one will be able to find you in order to hire you. So go to projectmewithtiffany.com under work with me or easier yet, swipe up in the show notes is the link direct to the applications. I only take six private clients at a time. That's it. And there are two spots left for summer. I already have people that have applied that I've accepted in the springtime that have deferred them over to summer session. Don't tell yourself that, oh, I'll do it after the summer when the kids are back in school. Then you'll have another story. Then it will be the kids are back in school. and Now I'm busy with that. Then I'll be the holidays. And if you don't have kids, you'll come up with some other shit. You want to know how I know that? Because it took me 10 years to even start and go all in with Project Me with Tiffany Carter. 10 years. This podcast has been on four years, and I feel like I started just a year ago. Time goes by so fast, and it's one thing we can't get back. Imagine if four years from now, even three years from now, you were for sure bringing in $100,000 a month in your business. You Would you put in the work? My client, LaToya Britt, who's a couple podcasts back, she started from scratch two years ago. She's making tens of thousands of dollars a month, speaking on stages now, started from scratch. Would that be worth it to you to go all in if you knew that was what was waiting on the other side? Well, that is what's waiting for you. So you've got to take some action. What are you sick of? Go vent. Go on a rant. Write it down if you want. Scribble it down. Go punch a pillow. Go for a run. What are you sick of? What are you sick of money-wise in your life? What are you sick of about your job, your business, your career, social media? Get it out 
and then use that energy to get into action and say, fuck this, I'm taking charge, I'm going to do something different, and enough's enough already. Wishing you great health, wealth, and worth as always. Love you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others. Help me help others.